Okay, <clears throat> started a bit early because uh, I'm keen to get going this morning. Uh, just tidying up some loose ends from yesterday's stream. Was it yesterday or Saturday? Uh, yeah, Saturday stream. Okay, um, so uh, getting the system up and running uh, has turned out to be a bit of a pain. Um, first of all, there's this problem with the uh, manifest check. Uh, in the standard build where for reasons I don't understand uh, they've got the sdist including the build directory so the very first thing we really want to do is um, edit the manifest uh, and add a line in here to ignore uh, test build because test build is, is a produced directory it's not part of the source and therefore uh, it's got no uh, what am i talking about not test build um dot build uh, because um yeah it's got no place in the source uh, really because uh, it can be regenerated from the document source using sphinx so why put it in there uh, the other issue uh, is a bit more complicated if we go back up here uh, it's it's not a major thing but you can see here we've got 56 warnings uh, and the warnings are all to do with uh, this marker which is being used to pick out um, uh, the tests being targeted at particular platforms or particular hosts within the within the system it's actually particular platforms that it's testing on uh, and similarly you've got another one which marks the test as being destructive and these are obviously used to select or to filter uh, tests that are, are destructive to the machines on which they run so one assumes that they're being run last it doesn't really matter the point is the fix for this is actually fairly trivial uh, all we need to do is within the test directory there is the conf tests and this is run as part of pi tests and at the bottom here uh, we've got this pi test configure function uh, and all we need to do is at the end of that function uh, we just need to add in uh, the registration of these PyTest marks. Uh, so we do that by saying config, which is the uh, parameter at the top here. Okay. Mm. Oops. Uh, so we do config, uh, and then we add any value line. Now this is effectively the programmatic equivalent of have of adding a line into the uh, pytest.ini, but this doesn't use pytest.ini; it's all done programmatically. So we're, we're sticking with that, uh, and we're going to add a single line, uh, and it's going to be to the markers section of the ini file, effectively, and it's going to say test infra hosts. Uh, uh, and really this is just very simply um, telling the system that this test infra hosts directive takes a parameter uh, and that's all we need to do uh, the rest of it is just um, documentation uh, okay so so that's the first one done the testing for us and the other one is just basically the same uh, so uh, we can just change this uh, to uh, destructive uh, now that doesn't take any parameters uh, so this simply marks the test as destructive uh, and that's it okay so that's that, that. Uh, 
that's all we need to do to suppress those warnings um, so having done that um, if we now just rerun tox we should get a completely clean set of tests uh, at least we would do if I hadn't uh, uh, oops, uh, uh, no, uh, come on, Mark, wake up. Uh, if I hadn't, uh, oh, okay, that uh, just goes to show. Oops, uh, if I hadn't put too many. Too many brackets in. Okay. Oh, blimey, now what have I done? Uh, what's this thing? Uh, typo, typo. Blah, blah, blah. What? Indentation, unexpected indent. Okay. Oops. Okay, what have, I, what have I done here? It should just be a continuation. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, well, what happened there? Let's keep it clean. Mm. Right, that's overconfidence doing your edits. Finally, right. So now uh, it should have a completely clean set of uh, warning free, error free tests. Not quite sure how I got away with that check manifest because uh, uh, if you run check manifest before you'd run the doc generation then i guess it would come through clean uh, because there would be no doc build uh, so the manifest wouldn't have to exclude it maybe that's the problem no i can't see any way if you just run tox with it currently you'll always get that check manifest error uh, hmm. yeah not sure what's going on anyway we can now move on because uh, we're now going to be actually doing the debugging <laughs> that we'd originally set out to do. So if you remember way back when, if we go into testing for our back ends, uh, and we go to the salt back end, this is the one that was causing the problem. And all we want to do is in here, uh, we've got this uh, run salt okay and run salt will uh, call out to the salt client uh, which will be installed locally uh, and uh, we're going to have a problem on this machine of course because we don't have uh, salt installed so I'm not sure whether we're going to have to install it into each of the tests and add selectors i suppose we ought to um which raises an interesting question because we probably need to change all of the back end vms uh, sorry the back end containers to all have salt installed uh, in order that we can test it uh, and the easiest way would be to create the salt master and minion within the container uh, hmm. anyway long and short of it is the actual fix for this is in here okay uh, between here which is when we get the results of running the salt command and here uh, which is uh, this salt uh, self result is actually uh, in the base class okay uh, and 
uh, sort result. There we go. Task back end. And uh, uh, run. Uh, so result. Okay, constructs this command result, uh, which you can see it takes these keyword arguments. Now, if we go up here, uh, uh, here's the command result. Okay, and there are these two additional keyword arguments. Okay, which typically don't bother getting set. All right, uh, but what they do, uh, what they do is. Uh, when it comes time to evaluate this, right? Uh, here. Uh, so if the self standard out is none, then the self standard out okay does this decode, and that's what's causing the problem in in salt uh, in the salt backend, okay? Because there is no decode because it's passed a, a specific string, uh, and that in turn, okay is because of all this nonsense uh, so what we need to do is we need to set the uh, standard out uh, yep, standard out and standard error okay by setting these two okay um because that will give us the the specific strings uh, so you can see if they're set, uh, then we just return standard out and standard error. If they're not set, then we do this decode, uh, which decodes the byte stream, which, we, which would normally be accepted, uh, expected. Right. So to do that, what we need to do is within salt. Uh, okay. When it does this, we need to pass in just in here, uh, okay, at the very end. We need to, we need to pass in the keyword args. Okay, now we can do that directly. We can pass the keyword args as an object, which sets standard out standard error to be uh, to be uh, out standard out and out standard error because we know that they're going to be strings. However, because we want to program uh, at least a little bit defensively. We, we will check that what gets returned from this run salt that the out standard out and out standard error actually are strings uh, because it could be in the future that somebody comes along and changes the salt client so it returns byte data uh, so we'll just be a bit defensive in here and we'll make sure uh, that we only set the standard out and standard error if they are genuinely strings uh, so there's a little bit of logic to go in there to set the uh, keyword args and then we pass that keyword args into uh, the call to result and that should fix our problem but before we fix it what we really want is a failing test uh, so let's have a look at testing for tests Okay, and uh, so uh, it's a really now we're, we're going to be testing the back ends, right? So we need to add tests into here, and you can see uh, what we need to do is figure out how these tests are actually being generated. <clears throat> okay, so you can see. Uh, testing for hosts. Let me see. Um, how is this actually happening? Okay, so host is straightforward enough. Uh, user host is setting a specific user. 
My question is, can we actually do any of that with salt? So the answer probably is no, because uh, I mean we could do it with salt SSH. Uh, yeah, but that's not salt. Uh, and salt will always be run as the privileged user because that's just the way it works. Um, yes, you can you can execute the salt command as an ordinary user, but it gets translated anyway into effectively uh, privileged user. So um, uh, that said, you can in theory run it as a non-privileged user and pseudo remote, but we're not going to do that. Okay. Uh, so, um, what we need to do is, at the very least, construct here uh, a call um, and these will go to Debian Buster. So these are literally just testing the back end, that's fine. So we, uh, all we need, I mean, we could, we could add these lines in, but they wouldn't make any difference because all of this, all of this stuff uh, means nothing to salt. Uh, Uh, and I don't think test infra really does anything with it. Let's have a look. Mm, test infra. Uh, um, I don't think it does anything with uh, the salt back end. Uh, I mean, we can probably. Uh, running by the docker exit command. Uh, see, salt doesn't do any of that magic stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, testing for the user salt connection channel to run commands. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the only thing you can say is that putting all that other stuff on here just make sure that it's ignored. Uh, Entirely sure. Whether we should be adding those tests or not. Now, for all backends, commands can be run as super user with a pseudo option or a specific user with a pseudo user option. Which raises an interesting question as to how that is going to work with salt. Uh, if we don't uh, set salt up, I mean, uh, if I, if we assume that what it's actually going to do is invoke the salt API as that user, then we would need to set salt up to allow that user to execute commands. Uh, well, I guess that might be what it's doing. So, uh, anyway, so we need to set that up anyway. So. What we need to now look at is uh, these images 
and in particular the Debian Buster image, which seems to be the only one testing the, for testing the back ends. Uh, and we need to add in here the code for setting up salt. Because uh, it sets up, oh, it sets up salt minion. Oh, right, okay. Uh, interesting. So it sets up the salt minion, but doesn't set up the salt master. So presumably. Because because salt's only being used to basically execute, it must be using a salt call then. Uh, okay, so salt is already installed then, so we shouldn't need to do anything to that. Oh, hang on a minute. Just disable the salt minion service. Why? because we don't want it trying to connect to the master okay fair enough but it leaves the api in there okay okay so we should just be able to add the test directly i guess we'll give it a go so we should just be able to i don't know why it doesn't do it now actually we should just be able to add the test in here uh, assault I wonder why it's not in there already uh, why why is it not already in there I mean if it had been in there we would have, it would have picked up this error Curious. Uh, there's a lot of work done on testing and some. Uh, probably because you need the uh, Ansible scripts of some time to be interpreted. Whereas everything else is just really being used as a proxy for um, SSH really. Okay. Uh, the good news is we've now got 184 passed and there's no warnings coming out. So the only other thing is we need our manifest check to pass. And bingo. Okay, so we've now got a clean a clean build. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try adding in over here uh, I'm going to try adding in the test uh, and just see whether uh, I can just I don't I don't I actually there must be a reason why they didn't bother leaving the salt tests in uh, so let's try. I mean, other than the fact that they're failing, I suppose. Uh, let's just, just for shits and giggles, let's just try adding them all in here. Uh, just mimicking each of these. Let's just see what happens.
that. We need to get user at out of there. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Run those tests again. It's either going to be a catastrophic failure or we're going to get some sensible output. Uh, okay, so we, we're getting an error, which is what we, we expect. The question is, is it the right kind of error? Uh, and hopefully, when it outputs everything at the end, we'll get some clue. And it won't be something silly. It'll be an error because we've got byte data being returned. I mean, to be honest, we could just stop now, fix the problem, and see whether that error goes away. But this is very much a uh, suck it and see. I am expecting that each of the sort commands will fail. And like I say, I'm just hoping that they fail because the data being returned is wrong and not because of some uh, fundamental problem. We shall see. Tired, mate. Mm -hmm. You've got a busy morning, haven't you? Outside, barking. Mm -hmm. Running around, sniffing the fence line. I don't know what got you all worked up or something, Ad. Mm -hmm. There's a conspicuous lack of output at the moment. And ooh, there we go. So it failed again. It fails fairly quickly, uh, which may be a good thing or it may be a bad thing. <laughs> uh, I think the reason why this Ansible stuff is stalling is because uh, when you've got the mind you, that's uh, yeah. It, it, it was because we've got the false Ansible. True, but it, it does warn you in the documentation that it's slow. Uh, so we're getting lots of errors. Well, it's got one there testing coding. What's that all about? Uh, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. cool. Uh, uh, not control left command F. Mm, test and coding. Uh, so it's obviously not part of the back end test. Uh, let's go back, leave. 
Uh, oh, darling. Uh, come on, let's get go back to the code. Right, uh, test. Uh, come on, go. Test encoding. Oh, there we go. So, uh, unfortunately, there's no documentation to tell us what's going on, but that's fine. We're grown ups, we can read. Uh, so if it's a docker type, else if uh, interesting uh, uh, here we go so right well, you're not going to get that back uh, from salt directly Mm. Uh, yeah, you won't get byte encoding back from salt, period. So <clears throat> we either have to fake it or we end up changing the tests. Uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, all of these tests assume that you're going to get those bytes back. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I mean, to make it pass these tests, you would have to then therefore coerce the output to be bytes, which kind of you know, gets rid of why you would um, pass the standard error and standard out in raw strings. So it's it's one thing or the other, isn't it? I, I don't quite understand. Uh, so on the on the one hand, to make it pass these tests, uh, it looks like so will have to coerce the output so that this standard error byte is returned. Otherwise, all of these are going to fail. Uh, uh, because this is never going to be returned as, as bytes. But why bother providing the facility then to return a string? Uh, you know, given that... Uh, mm. So, the question is, do you, do you change the test? Or do you change the way the code works? Uh, I mean, co coercing it to a byte is not exactly, you know, a catastrophe. Uh, uh, we can do uh, Python coerce string to byte. Uh, Uh, best way to convert string to bytes in Python 3. Right, there you go. Uh, so we can do byte array. Uh, What is errors? Uh, so source uh, So it's not it's not a big deal. Mm.
you would probably do bite rather than bite array. Uh, in order to keep it consistent. Uh, and if I remember correctly, salt encoding is UTF-8, so that's easy enough. Uh. Hmm. Well, uh, it looks to me like to pass these tests, we're going to have to abandon our original fix, which was simple and elegant, uh, and go to alternative, which is inside the salt run command. Oh, it's not, it's not a major issue, I don't think. Uh, but it would mean uh, just coercing. So in the back end, uh, I mean, it's kind of redundant because it means we're just converting to the bytes and then converting back. Uh, but it will at least pass these tests. Uh, so inside run salt in here, when we get the out output, uh, uh, we we would have to coerce. Uh, so this is returning just for the host for this particular run. So in here, we would have to coerce out self-hosts uh, and the standard out and standard error, coerce those to be byte strings rather than strings. Uh, and then the rest of the code would then convert it immediately back. Uh, the more elegant way is to use the standard error and standard out, but that again, I think that will cause a problem because these tests won't pass. Uh, so uh, if you take the tests as being the specification, the specification says that those byte arrays have to be there. Uh, and you can make an argument that um, it's wrong, but uh, Mm. It is what it is. Uh, so e either or, I suppose the thing to do is have a conversation with the author uh, and see what's what. Of course, it all depends on what these errors are. Well, uh, my my money is on uh, there being a problem uh, that the return values are causing it to choke. Uh, like I say, we can get a half solution, or we can make the salt back in conform to the rest of the system. Mm, we're closing in on it. Right. Drop it back momentarily.
Right. Oh. Okay. Uh, unbound local error. Ooh. Well, that's not very good, is it? Okay, so we've obviously got a more serious problem. So what's the problem? Uh, it's in backend test command. Uh, I'll reference before assortment. Right. Okay, so these tests are obviously going to be a problem, aren't they? Uh, right, so... Um, Uh, so test back end uh, and the problem seems to be test back ends uh, on, uh, right. and it's in line uh, uh, doesn't say but it's in test command Uh, here we go. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so we need to look at uh, the fixture. Right, so here's the fixture. Your problem. Mm, yeah. So the host name is being set here if you've got a Docker connection. It's being set here uh, if it's one of these.
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Mm -hmm. Okay, these uh, there's a lot of special pleading going on in these tests. Um, Right, so each of these is dealing essentially with SSH. Uh, there's got to be a special case for Ansible, surely, where it's uh, doing Ansible only. Now this gets the SSH configuration. Uh, Uh, the Docker ID host port Okay, so looking at this now, I'm thinking uh, there needs to be a whole section for salt testing because this really is only looking at Docker and then essentially the SSH based ones. Uh, we've got Ansible mixed in there, but uh,
Hmm. Right, so we know the root cause of the problem, and that is uh, these tests were never intended to cover salt. Uh, and if we want it to, then we're going to have to extend all of this stuff uh, to do with salt. Now, funnily enough, uh, salt is in the docker ranges, at least the salt minion is. Um, but in order to invoke that minion, um, So we've got each of these. Mm -hmm. Right, so if I go back over here, uh, yeah, that's not, okay, so this is all the errors that we just looked at. Uh, uh, Mm. 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 I'm not sure I'm going to have to scroll back far enough. Okay, so. Actually being rebuilt here. Yeah. It's rebuilding each of those environments. So it rebuilds each of these. Uh, the only one that's really interesting for our purposes is this one. Because this is the one that's used to test all of the back ends. Uh, and it installs some minion. Um, Oh my god, I don't think. Uh, so it sets up a user. It's not really. Uh, if it only sets up the salt minion, it doesn't test between. Uh, How is it testing? Well, I'm mystified. It's how he addresses Debian Buster. Uh,
So invokes the run command on the host. Let's assume that everything was working correctly. Okay, so the run command is executed on the host. And the host is whatever is returned from this host fixture. Okay, which is ultimately uh, a testing browser get host from the host spec which best case is going to be that which will be like for example salt yeah. and in here uh, if a docker has got the docker id whose name is equal to the spec name Mm -hmm. uh, that can't be wrong, can it? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's actually the docker host, which is going to be the host name. So, uh, Right, so that's where the docker host is coming from.
So, uh, this is testing for a host. Okay. Uh, if it's a test in for a host, that's probably the base class is it and this is going to instantiate uh, okay, get back end Mm 
Uh, class, class, get back in class. Um, And uh, okay, so presumably the back ends have registered. Okay, so that just instantiates a sort back end. Uh, we still have a sort of fundamental problem. Which is what to do in here when the connection is a salt connection. Uh, I mean, essentially, it's going to be very similar to an SSH connection, is a bit more answerable question. It doesn't need a key. It depends what salt needs. What keywords does salt backend need? So So it needs a host client is always going to be a local client. We don't have a master installed, so Presumably, when it tries to get the client, and Uh, it means this salt client, which of course is actually part of the salt interface. Uh, so, uh, salt's not installed on that machine, so let's go over here. Come on. Uh, let's go to uh, GitHub uh, and stack and run the search box. Salt stack. At least we're in the right repositories. So. Uh, soft. Uh, soft client. Uh, now then, is it in the API? Need uh, F local hold. Mm. And F local client. Uh, but up, but up, but up. There we go. Wrap local client for running blah blah blah. 
not an actual local clock object, so let's go back to basics. Mm. Ah, here we go. Class local client interface used by blah blah blah. There we go. So we do need a salt register. Uh, so whatever machine that test is running on, which is in this case this machine here, so we need to install the salt master on the machine we're running the tests on. Which is fine. But if the salt minion is disabled on Uh, and the salt minion would have to connect. Oh, this is a bit of a bugger's model, isn't it? So, we would need the salt master running on this vagrant box. Uh, and we would need each of the docker instances to connect uh, the salt minion back to the master on the docker host and uh, if I remember correctly there is a way of getting the docker host IP uh, docker host IP address uh, how to get a docker container IP I just don't care there we go uh, get a docker host IP address from in a container now obviously we would need to modify So we're looking for docker zero If you run the IP on your docker host well, that's okay, that's for getting it inside Docker host, isn't it? Mm, if we do it over here, we get IPA. There we go. So that's our Docker host address. So when we run. Uh, that doesn't answer the question how do I get it from then? Yeah, we'd have to pass it in. Ah. Okay, so that would mean changing the way Docker is run from within PyTest in order to pass in the IP address, which we would then set that as being the salt master and then start the minion service mm, it's all a bit of a bit of a mess in it mate mm. and then the salt minion would have to be given the same name uh, so the minion ID would have to be set then you'd have to start the salt minion it would have to connect back to the master we need code in to ensure the salt master was started up 
And the salt menu was connected, that the key was accepted. Oh, this is suddenly becoming much more complicated, isn't it? Mm. This might explain why it's not set up. What do you think? Uh, all of this just to make a point. Hmm. Well, it's an interesting exercise, but not one I really want to go into right now. So we'll come back to it this afternoon, I think. Right. Okay, that'll do for now. Uh,